certainly didn't expect um, a pandemic to hit. But um, when it did, the very first thing that came to mind and into the minds of my sisters was the polio epidemic of 1951, which was so formative in our lives. Um, I had in mind my father, who in 1951 was completely paralyzed by the polio epidemic, um, hospitalized in an iron lung for two years, and he sustained himself um, knowing that his brain was unaffected. Probably he would never walk again, but he determined to live. And he could never walk or stand, but I can. He had fought in World War II. The tank in front of his was blown to bits. He was leading an iron tank division. He, was, he became captain on the spot and received a silver star. So everyone was crazed and concerned, and I sat down to work. I really have not made significant body of work for years um, because I have not had um, the, 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 the quiet time to concentrate. This is what this period has been for me. I, mean, I think there are 80 some drawings. There are 32 silver points. There's a series of eight drawings, which I, small drawings with carbon paper. It has been very significant that during this period, I am working with Jill Silverman von Koenigsgratz, who feels that this work I'm doing has real significance. And she is not wrong. This was different in kind. This was a restart. This was like turning on a button. Um, and I was able to concentrate and focus with unequivocal commitment and determination, as I have not done maybe since I made my commitment to the studio, 1983. It was more her, her encouragement and enthusiasm which quickened it, I would say more than the circumstances around me. It is invaluable during such a period to have someone watching, not, not pushing, not impinging, but watching and really echoing back what's going on, seeing it for what it is. Talking about the drawings, I feel we've kind of talked around them, but there was such a sense of freedom of movement. It was thrilling that it was fun or enjoyable as opposed to a strain. This somehow felt different. This just really felt, the lines were wobbly, but they would end in the right spot. What intrigues me is how you dealt with this rather exotic, if you like, channeling. You're looking at works you hadn't done before. No, well, this is what you hope for. I mean, it was through, if they were dispatches to you, they're kind of dispatches to me too. I hope you'll agree I am the embodiment of humility. That's why the work is the way it is. I don't make it, it comes through me. So on this period, it's coming through me again without the usual noise. <laughs> I am on my own. I had time then to sit down and put into words what I was thinking, what I was remembering from my childhood, how it felt during a time of enormous panic. I mark my measure as I enact time itself. Poise and grace are all. And breath. What an irony then that my art is made of the very breath at risk to millions of lives worldwide. This is familiar, familial territory. In 1951, my young father, Roger Joseph, was stricken with polio during the deadly epidemic that year. Confined to an iron lung, he returned home after two years in hospital. Breathing for him was not involuntary. During sleep, he was aided by a rocking bed. He conducted his law practice from a wheelchair, upright and alert in mind, reminding himself to breathe. 
I have often thought that the sound of my graphite pencil moving through paper, marking my breath, was very like a breathing machine. This I noted in my jotting dated 27 August 2004. That thought haunts me now. I breathe easily because I can. I remain upright and alert because I am able. I am two feet walking because I must.